27 years. 27 years. For 27 years, the family of Tupac Shakur has been waiting for justice. We are here today to announce the arrest of 60-year-old Dwayne Keith Davis, a.k.a. Keefe D, for the murder of Tupac Shakur. On September 29th, 2023, a major development took place in the long-standing case of the murder of Tupac Shakur, one of the most influential rappers in hip-hop's history. Dwayne Keith Davis, also known as Keith D, was taken into custody by the Las Vegas Metropolitan Police in connection with the murder. Tupac's death has been shrouded in mystery for years, but for those who closely follow news in the hip-hop world, Keith D's involvement in the rapper's death was an open secret with the motive behind the hit being caught on camera. Keith D's arrest has brought the case back into the spotlight, leading many to wonder who he is, what his role in Tupac's death was, and why it took 27 years for the former gangster to finally end up behind bars. Keith D was a member of the Southside Crips gang, and he is believed to have been involved in the shooting of Tupac and his manager, Sug Knight, on the night of September 7, 1996, in Las Vegas. The murder of Tupac Shakur has been one of the most high-profile cases in the history of hip-hop, and it has been the subject of numerous documentaries, books, and articles. Tupac was only 25 years old when he was killed, and his death left a void in the music industry that has never been filled. I wish that my son was here and that he could go and uh, lie down in my bed and come out of my room and say, Ma, what'd you cook? I miss his being. He was my son, and I miss him as my, my baby, my boy, who I loved, respected. His mother, Afeni Shakur, was almost brought to tears by the death of her son, and she had been waiting for justice for 20 years. Unfortunately, Afeni Shakur passed away on May 2, 2016, after going into cardiac arrest at her home at the age of 69. She had been waiting for the cops to get justice for her slain son, but after her death, the case regarding Tupac's death was opened again, leading to Keith D's arrest. The arrest of Keith D has been a long time coming, and it has brought a sense of closure to Tupac's fans, who have been waiting for 27 years for justice. The murder of Tupac Shakur was a tragic event that shook the music industry to its core, and it is hoped that with Keith D's arrest, the case will finally be closed, and Tupac's memory can be honored and respected. After years of investigation, one of the men believed to have played a role in the tragic murder of the legendary rapper Tupac Shakur was finally arrested. Tupac, who was known for his socially conscious lyrics and his ability to capture the raw emotions of his listeners, was gunned down in a drive-by shooting in Las Vegas in 1996. The murder sent shockwaves throughout the music industry and left fans around the world devastated. Despite numerous leads and investigations over the years, the case remained unsolved for decades. However, in recent years, law enforcement officials have made significant progress in their investigation, and they have identified several individuals who they believe were involved in the murder. One of these individuals was finally apprehended and taken into custody, providing a glimmer of hope that justice may finally be served. Las Vegas Metro Police took Dwayne Keefe D. Davis into custody Friday. He's being held on charges related to the 1996 murder of rapper Tupac Shakur. In July of a particular year, law enforcement officials raided the home of Keefe D. in Henderson, Nevada. The reason behind this raid was to obtain notes, writings, ledgers, and other handwritten or typed documents that were related to television shows, documentaries, YouTube episodes, book manuscripts, and movies that were related to the murder of Tupac Shakur. The police were looking for evidence that would reveal the motive behind the murder or even reveal the identity of Tupac's killers. Alongside the electronics, the investigators also left Keith D's home with USB and hard drives, photographs, and copies of Vibe magazine and Compton Street Legends book. The latter was co-authored by Keith D and Yosef Ja. The investigators were on a mission to find any evidence that would help them solve the murder case of Tupac Shakur. They were looking for any documents, notes, or other materials that would provide them with a lead on what happened that fateful night. Keith D was a prime suspect in the case, and the police were hoping that the raid on his home would yield some valuable clues that would help them solve the case. 
Keith D. had been able to evade the cops for 27 years, but the investigators were not giving up on the case. They were determined to find out what happened to Tupac Shakur and bring his killers to justice. The raid on Keith D.'s home was just one of the many steps that they were taking to solve the case. As it turned out, Keith D. had been feeling emboldened and had been shouting from the rooftops about what happened the night Tupac died. It all started in 2008 when Keith D. was arrested in a PCP ring case. According to reports, the feds had been gathering evidence on the drug ring that Keith D. ran and had enough intel to put him away for 25 years. As is the usual practice with law enforcement officials, they enticed Keith D. to tell them what happened the night Tupac was shot dead. The investigators were hoping that Keith D.'s confession would provide them with the evidence they needed to solve the case. They were hoping that Keith D. would reveal the identity of Tupac's killers or provide them with clues that would lead them to the killers. The raid on Keith D.'s home was just one of the many steps that the investigators were taking to solve the case. They were determined to find out what happened to Tupac Shakur and bring his killers to justice. It was a case that had gone cold for years, a shooting that had taken place decades ago, leaving behind a trail of unanswered questions and shattered lives. The families of the victims had been desperate for justice, but it seemed like the case would never be solved. But then, out of nowhere, a new lead had emerged. A witness who had been too afraid to speak up before had finally come forward. His name was Keith D., and he had been involved in the shooting in some way. At first, the investigators had been skeptical. Keith D. had a reputation for being unreliable and untrustworthy. But when they dug deeper, they found that he had a personal connection to one of the victims. It was this connection that had finally given him the courage to speak up. When Keith D. was brought in for questioning, he was visibly nervous. He knew that he was taking a risk by coming forward, but he also knew that it was the right thing to do. The investigators pressed him for details, asking him to recount everything he knew about the shooting. At first, Keith D. was hesitant. He didn't want to incriminate himself or anyone else who had been involved. But when the investigators revealed that they had new evidence that could implicate him, he started to crack. And we put an ironclad case against him, approach him, and say, here's the deal, Keith D. We have questions about these murders. If you don't cooperate, you're going to prison for the rest of your life, and so are several members of your family who are caught up in your drug war. The floodgates opened, and Keith D. began to spill everything he knew. He told them about the shooter, who had long since died. He told them about the other people who had been involved, most of whom had also passed away. And he told them about his own role in the shooting, which had haunted him for years. For three straight hours, Keith D. sang like a bird. He didn't hold anything back, and the investigators were able to piece together the missing parts of the puzzle. When they were done, they thanked Keith D. for his cooperation. It wasn't often that someone came forward like this, and they knew that his testimony would be crucial in bringing the case to a close. He confesses to his involvement in the murder of Tupac Shakur in Las Vegas in 1996. He tells us that his nephew, Orlando Anderson, was in the same car with him, which was the white Cadillac. In a startling revelation, he admits to his participation in the assassination of Tupac Shakur in 1996, disclosing that his nephew Orlando Anderson was also present in the white Cadillac. This confession led to the dismissal of drug charges against Keith D., granting him a second chance at life and the opportunity to start anew. However, in 2011, former Los Angeles Police Department detective Greg Kading published a book titled Murder Rap which extensively detailed Keith D's admission. Kading's work, renowned for his involvement in the investigation of Tupac and Biggie Smalls' murders, compelled Keith D to divulge the truth about Tupac's assassination. This groundbreaking book sent shockwaves throughout the hip-hop community, implicating several prominent figures in the industry. Notably, Sean Combs, also known as P. Diddy, emerged as a significant name in the narrative. As Kading's book and Keith D's story captivated audiences worldwide, the former gangster couldn't help but feel envious. He believed that this was his story, and he deserved recognition for unveiling it to the world. In 2015, four years after the release of his book, a documentary was produced about the beloved artist. This must have been a painful blow for him, as he saw others profiting from what he believed to be his own story. Meanwhile, his name was tarnished, 
and his reputation destroyed for breaking the street code and cooperating with authorities. The police were making a fortune, according to Greg Kading. Keef D., driven by his ego, resented the fact that someone else was sharing the story instead of him. In a surprising turn of events, Keef D. made the decision to publicly reveal the truth. This marked the beginning of the end for him. He appeared on various podcasts, openly disclosing the horrifying details surrounding Tupac's death. According to Greg Kading, Keef D.'s desire to take ownership of the story and tell it himself led him to speak publicly about the events of 1996. But if you understand the ego of TPD, he resented that somebody else was telling the story other than him. And so that whole thing prompted him to then go out and publicly boast um, about his involvement. Keith D. actively sought opportunities to share his routine of revealing the tragic events that led to Tupac's death. He appeared on various podcasts and shows, seemingly without any concern for the consequences. So, what fueled Keith D.'s audacity? Well, besides his ego, there were other factors at play. In a recent interview with popular YouTuber DJ Vlad, it was revealed that Keith D agreed to appear on Vlad TV, a channel with a massive following of over 5 million subscribers, because he believed he had immunity from prosecution. This belief stemmed from a proffer agreement he made with the feds back in 2008. Well, I think that he believed that he had a level of immunity when he did the proffer agreement. Now, it's crucial to understand what a proffer agreement entails. It is an agreement between the defendant and the government, ensuring that any statements made by the defendant during an off-the-record interview will not be used against them in future legal proceedings. Keith D., unfortunately, failed to consult with his attorney before participating in these interviews, mistakenly thinking he had complete immunity. While his words to the feds in 2008 were protected, he was unaware that anything he said outside of the official interview room could be used against him. This lack of knowledge eventually led to his prosecution, as discussed in an interview with Greg Kading. The proffer agreement between KD and the feds was essentially a promise that any self-incriminating statements made during their conversation would not be used against him. However, KD mistakenly thought this agreement applied to every aspect of his life outside of that room. This led him to boast about his involvement in the murder, unaware that none of it was protected under the agreement. Essentially, he talked himself into jail. Additionally, DJ Vlad revealed another reason for Keith D's false sense of confidence, his cancer diagnosis. Knowing he didn't have much time left, he felt invincible. Uh, I also, I think at the time, he was saying that he had cancer, so maybe he didn't think he had uh, much time to live. Uh, so he was just kind of letting it loose at, at that point. Keith D., a former notorious gangster, has once again found himself in a troubling situation. Despite his assurance back in 2019 when he released his memoir, Compton Street Legend, where he divulged additional information to the authorities, it seems he failed to consider that law enforcement is constantly monitoring podcasts, patiently waiting for individuals like him to implicate themselves. But it wasn't until 2018 that this case was reinvigorated as additional information came to light related to this homicide. Specifically, Dwayne Davis's own admissions to his involvement in this homicide investigation that he provided to numerous different media. While some may wonder whether Keith D. will actually end up in jail, his confession to the feds in 2008, as well as his admissions and interviews, all point to his nephew as the gunman. However, aiding and abetting in Nevada means that if you act as an accomplice in a crime and knowingly aid in the betting, you become liable for the crime you help commit and face the same penalties as the principals. In Keith D's case, the shooter could have been charged with murder. Upon Keith D's arrest, he was charged with one count of murder with a deadly weapon and with the intent to promote further or assist a criminal gang. It's important to note that at the time of Tupac's death, Keith D was the leader of the Southside Compton Crips gang. It's evident from his conversation with a cop during his arrest that the ex-gangster knew his goose was cooked and that it was only a matter of time before he was arrested. It's a shame that someone who was once such a feared gangster has found themselves in the position they are in now. However, it's important to remember that actions have consequences and aiding in a crime is just as serious as committing the crime itself. Hopefully, Keith D will learn from his mistakes 
and use his experiences to help deter others from going down the same path he did. During his confession, Keith D. dropped the exact details of Tupac's murder, sending chills down the spines of those who were listening. It was a moment of truth that many had been waiting for, and yet it was also a moment of sadness and pain. The loss of Tupac has been felt deeply by his fans and the hip-hop community as a whole, and the thought that his killer has been walking free all these years is a bitter pill to swallow. So what they got you for, man? Oh yeah? Like recent? In the aftermath of Keith D's confession, there has been a growing call for him to be held accountable for his actions. Many believe that he should spend the rest of his days locked up, paying for the crimes that he has committed. His lack of remorse for his actions only adds fuel to the fire, and it is clear that there are many who have no sympathy for him. As the investigation into Tupac's murder continues, it is clear that there are still many unanswered questions. However, the arrest of Keith D has brought us one step closer to the truth, and for that, we can be grateful. I stand firm on the point that Tupac, Suge Knight, and the rest of those niggas didn't have any business putting their hands on my beloved nephew, Baby Lane, period. Them jumping on my nephew gave us the ultimate green light to do something to their ass. Tupac chose the wrong game to play and the wrong niggas to play with. Suge and them should have done a better job of protecting that dude because they knew who the fuck we were and the kind of shit we were capable of. Tupac may not have known, but Suge and his peeps definitely knew. Tupac was a guppy that got swallowed up by some ferocious sharks. He shouldn't have ever got involved in that bullshit trying to be I stand firm on the point that Tupac, Sug Knight, and the rest of those nig asterisk asterisk s didn't have any business putting their hands on my beloved nephew, Baby Lane, period. Them jumping on my nephew gave us the ultimate green light to do something to their ass. Tupac chose the wrong game to play, and the wrong nig asterisk asterisk s to play with. Suji and them should have done a better job of protecting that dude because they knew who the F asterisk asterisk K we were and the kind of S asterisk T we were capable of. Tupac may not have known, but Suji and his peeps definitely knew. Tupac was a guppy that got swallowed up by some ferocious sharks. He shouldn't have ever got involved in that B asterisk LL asterisk T of trying to be a thug. Keith D, a man unknown to many in the hip hop industry, stands before the court as the community eagerly awaits justice in an ongoing deadly feud. Growing up, Keith D was heavily influenced by gang culture and had links to the Southside Compton Crips. At the age of 15, a tragic event occurred as he lost his mother to colon cancer. In 2014, he also battled cancer, just like his mother had earlier, and survived. In 2018, he wrote a memoir where he discussed his involvement in Tupac's death and now faces the possibility of spending the rest of his life in jail if convicted. Keith D's life had many tragedies, including the loss of his brothers, one through cancer, and the death of another in a shooting incident in Compton. He spent over 10 years behind bars in state and federal prisons. Keith D got involved in various criminal activities, such as shooting a rival gang member's home. His life of crime commenced in 1971 when peer pressure led him to join the Crips gang, which was then normal in his community. Even though Keith D served time in prison from 1985 to 1989, it did not rehabilitate him but only further steeled him as a gangster. After leaving prison, Keith D became involved in the hip-hop industry by forming connections with rapper Eazy-E and former drug kingpin Harry O. This shows his considerable influence within the rap industry. Harry O, one of the co-founders of Death Row Records, the record label that launched the careers of rap icons like Snoop Dogg, Dr. Dre, and Tupac Shakur, had been serving time for attempted murder and kidnapping since 1988. However, in 2021, former President Donald Trump intervened and shortened his sentence by seven years. Interestingly, Harry O wasn't the only Death Row Records co-founder that Keith D, a close associate, had connections with. Keith D and the notorious Sug Knight had grown up together, but their relationship eventually soured. According to Keith D, he first met Sug Knight when they were just nine years old, and their bond dates back to their days playing Pop Warner football. Keith D was a running back while Sug Knight played center, 
highlighting their earlier friendship and shared experiences. However, things changed when Keith D crossed paths with Sean Combs, also known as P. Diddy or Puff Daddy. Their relationship began when Keith D lent a lowrider car to Usher for one of his music videos. Unfortunately, the lowrider suffered damage during Usher's dance performance. Thankfully, Diddy took responsibility and personally funded the repairs. This incident ignited a relationship between Keith D and Diddy during the period when Diddy established Bad Boy Records, which was in rivalry with Death Row Records. Nevertheless, prior to the conflict between the two labels, P. Diddy and Suge Knight were actually acquaintances. In an interview, Diddy disclosed that the Death Row Records leader would even give him a ride from the airport. Because homeboy, me and him were, were, were friends. Wow. And was was, you? Yeah, yeah, he would wow. pick me up from the airport. Diddy would soon realize that the two music executives were not allies in 1995 during the Second Source Awards, where Suge dissed him. To provide context regarding the infamous night, it's important to recall that this incident was a significant event in the hip-hop industry. The Source was one of the most, if not the most, renowned hip-hop magazines at the time. Therefore, the who's who of rap attended, from Nas to Wu-Tang Clan. The hip-hop community had gathered for the award show at Madison Square Garden's Paramount Theater. However, there was one notable absence, Tupac. At the time, he was serving time for a sexual abuse case against him from November 30th, 1994. While in New York recording music, Tupac was robbed and shot. He alleged that he had been set up by people connected to Diddy's label, which fueled the feud between Bad Boy and Death Row. The conflict escalated the night of the awards when the Death Row co-founder took the stage to accept an award and delivered a speech that would ultimately lead to some of the worst events in hip-hop history. The comments made were directly aimed at P. Diddy, who often appeared in his artist's music videos. Despite the tense atmosphere that night, P. Diddy took the stage and, instead of retaliating against Death Row, chose to offer an olive branch. I'm the executive producer that a comment was made about a little bit earlier. But con check this out. Contrary to what other people may feel, I would like to say that I'm very proud of Dr. Dre, of Death Row, and Shook Knight for their accomplishment. It seems that Diddy desired peace, or at least wanted others to believe so. Over the next two years, unfortunate events unfolded, resulting in the deaths of Tupac and Biggie, with Diddy and Keith D finding themselves deeply involved. Things didn't improve after Tupac's release from prison, especially with the release of the harsh diss track, Hit Em Up. Additionally, on September 24, 1995, during an event at the Platinum House nightclub in Atlanta, Shug physically confronted Diddy. Despite wanting to retaliate against Death Row, Diddy was wary of Sug Knight. Instead, he sought help from someone unafraid of his rival, the leader of the Southside Compton Crips. With Keith D's support, Diddy began considering the idea of eliminating the Death Row CEO. According to Keith D, discussions about Shakur's assassination occurred once at a concert in Anaheim and a few times at Greenblatt's Deli on the Sunset Strip. He took me downstairs and he's like, man, I want to get rid of them dudes, man. I was like, we'll wipe their uh, asterisk S out quick, man. It's nothing. According to Keith D's testimony, Diddy initially only wanted Suge Knight dead. However, after Tupac released a vicious diss track targeting Bad Boy Records, he was also added to the list of targets. When Combs was asked specifically about Shakur and Knight, did he always mention both of them? He added the boy Shakur on after he made a record, the ex-gangster replied. Before that, it was just Sug Knight. And then after Hit Em Up came out, the detective asked and Keith D replied saying, Yeah, yeah, that pissed Combs off. After the release of the song Hit Em Up, the detective questioned Keith D, who confirmed that it angered Combs. The first physical altercation between the two groups occurred at the Soul Train Music Awards in March 1996. A scuffle broke out when a notorious bodyguard displayed a weapon in front of a member of Shakur's crew backstage at the Shrine Auditorium in Los Angeles. Thankfully, no one was injured. However, a few months later, in August, the beef claimed its first casualty. 
A group of Southside Crips assaulted and robbed one of Shakur's bodyguards at a mall in Lakewood, stealing a diamond-studded death row medallion from him. The next confrontation involved childhood friends Keith D. and Sug Knight, who were both part of the Southside Crips. On September 7, 1996, they traveled to Las Vegas to watch Mike Tyson's fight against Bruce Seldon. After the fight, they planned to meet at the cafe in the MGM Grand, but Keith D.'s nephew, Orlando Anderson, who went by the name Baby Lane, failed to show up. According to the witness statement, the man informed the police that his nephew had been attacked near the casino. Surveillance footage confirmed that individuals associated with the notorious death row gang had surrounded and assaulted the young child named Lane. Upon hearing about the incident, Keith D. in his book admitted that the situation had become deeply personal, prompting him to seek revenge without delay. Keith D., along with three others named T. Brown, Dre, and Baby Lane, decided to attend a death row after party at Club 662, where Tupac was scheduled to perform. T. Brown assumed the role of the driver that evening, with Keith D. seated beside him. Baby Lane occupied the seat behind the driver, while Dre was positioned behind Keith D. Initially, Keith D. had planned to confront Knight, whom he had known for a long time. However, after waiting for an hour and a half with no sign of Tupac or Knight, Keith D. called off his crew. In his book, he stated that it was fortunate for them that Tupac and Knight didn't show up, as the outcome would have resembled the infamous Al Capone's Valentine's Day Massacre. On their way back home, the group made a stop to purchase alcohol. Keith D. confessed to placing the Glock firearm, which he intended to use, in the back of the car. Once they resumed their journey, they came across Tupac, partially hanging out of a BMW, acknowledged his fans who were calling his name. The fans then turned their Cadillac around and followed the BMW until they reached a traffic light. For a brief moment, the occupants of both vehicles exchanged glances. Suddenly, Tupac reached for his gun, and that's when the chaos erupted. The shooter in the back seat of the Cadillac rolled down the window and unleashed a rapid barrage of gunshots towards Tupac's BMW. According to Keith D., one of his associates in the back seat grabbed a Glock and retaliated with gunfire. Tupac was struck four times, with bullets piercing his chest, arm, and thigh. One of the bullets entered his right lung. Marion Knight, also known as Sug Knight, was hit in the head by shrapnel. The assailants quickly fled the scene, even catching a glimpse of the two ambulances carrying Tupac and Knight. They decided to abandon their Cadillac and proceeded to celebrate, popping bottles as if it were any other ordinary night. At the hospital, Shakur was heavily sedated and placed on life support machines. Despite his repeated attempts to leave his bed while in the critical care unit, he was ultimately put into a medically induced coma. Tragically, on the afternoon of Friday, September 13, 1996, Shakur succumbed to respiratory failure that led to cardiac arrest after the removal of life support. Everyone present at the crime scene refused to cooperate with the police, leaving them with limited leads. It was later discovered that Death Row Records sought to seek revenge in a more traditional manner the following year. Christopher George Latour Wallace, also known as Biggie Smalls, was fatally shot outside the Peterson Automotive Museum in Los Angeles after a party for the Soul Train Music Awards. It is believed that Suge Knight ordered the hit. Keith D's arrest has sparked discussions, with celebrities offering their perspectives on the matter. One notable voice is that of Suge Knight, who was with Tupac on the day he was shot. Despite witnessing the occupants of the white Cadillac, Knight chose not to cooperate with the police. This raised suspicion among many, leading some to speculate that he may have played a role in Tupac's death. Rumors began to circulate when news broke that Tupac was planning to leave Death Row Records after completing his album titled Don Caluminati, The Seven Day Theory. Allegedly, he intended to start his own record company called Machiavelli Records. With Tupac gone, Death Row Records stood to lose a significant amount of money. Killing him would allow them to profit from everything associated with him. All of Tupac's unreleased songs were said to be in possession of a record label, who planned to release them on various soundtracks and compilation albums. There were even talks of potential new albums. This rumor gained more traction when Gaddafi, who famously appeared on the diss track Hit Him Up, agreed to testify about the night Tupac was shot. 
Gaddafi was in the car behind Shakur's and witnessed the shooting. Initially, he refused to cooperate with the police, but later mentioned that he might be able to identify the attackers. However, on November 10, 1996, Gaddafi was shot in the head and died in Orange, New Jersey. Many suspected foul play involving death row records, as Gaddafi's death seemed too convenient. To make matters worse, another rumor began circulating, claiming that Tupac was actually alive. Interestingly enough, this rumor was started by Suga Knight himself in 2014. While leaving a West Hollywood nightclub, Knight spoke to a TMZ camera and revealed that he did not kill Tupac, as many people suspected. He claimed to have been the one protecting the late rapper. The recent arrest of Keith D has rekindled discussions surrounding the case, with various celebrities adding their voices to the narrative. Notably, one of the most prominent voices is that of the individual who was by Tupac's side during the tragic incident. When Suge Knight witnessed the individuals in the white Cadillac on the day of the shooting, he chose not to assist the police, which left many skeptical. Some even speculated that he may have had a hand in Tupac's death. These rumors began circulating after it was announced that Tupac was planning to leave Death Row Records. He had only one album left to complete for the label, titled Don Killuminati, The Seven Day Theory, before starting his own record company called Machiavelli Records. With Tupac gone, Death Row Records stood to lose a significant amount of money. Killing him would ensure they could profit from everything associated with him, including his unreleased songs, which they could release under their label on various platforms. This theory gained more traction when Gaddafi, who famously appeared on the diss track Hit Em Up, agreed to testify. He had been in the car behind Shakur's vehicle on the night of the shooting and witnessed the incident. Initially, he refused to cooperate with the police, but later mentioned that he might be able to identify the attackers. However, on November 10, 1996, Gaddafi was shot in the head and killed in Orange, New Jersey. Many found his death to be suspicious, further fueling the suspicions surrounding Tupac's murder. Another disturbing incident related to the death row emerged, and to make matters worse, a new rumor began circulating, suggesting that Tupac was actually alive. Interestingly, it was none other than Sug Knight who initiated this rumor in 2014. As he was leaving a nightclub in West Hollywood, a TMZ camera approached the former head of Death Row Records, and he revealed some shocking information. Firstly, he made it clear that he was not the one responsible for the tragic death of the rapper, as many had suspected. In fact, he claimed to have been a protector of Tupac. Did Tupac fake his own death and escape to Cuba, just like his aunt, Asata Shakur, who fled to the country after being convicted of murder? There are rumors that Tupac, fearing for his life and tired of fame, decided to disappear and start a new life in Cuba. Adding to the mystery, the person who cremated Tupac's body retired and hasn't been seen since. In light of all this, Sug Knight, who is currently serving a 28-year sentence for voluntary manslaughter, expressed surprise at Keith D's arrest. He never thought Keith D would be caught, and regardless of his involvement in anything, he wouldn't wish prison upon anyone, not even his worst enemy. While waiting at a red light, he and his childhood friend made eye contact right before the gunshots rang out. Contrary to expectations, the co-founder of Death Row Records announced that he would testify against Keith D. When asked by TMZ, he made it clear that he had no intention of cooperating with the police or testifying. This decision was understandable, considering he was currently in jail. If the other inmates found out about his cooperation, his time behind bars would become unbearable. He would likely face attacks or, even worse, get killed since snitching is strongly frowned upon in prison. What is surprising about the co-founder's response to the arrest is that he still denied that Baby Lane pulled the trigger. He claimed to have no negative opinions about Orlando, stating that he wasn't the shooter. Does he possess insider knowledge that is unknown to the public? Is he questioning the accuracy of Keith D's account of the events? We may never find out. On the other hand, Tupac's sister, Sakiwa Shakur, expressed her joy upon hearing about the arrest. After so many years, she took to Instagram to share a brief message, emphasizing her family's pursuit of true justice on all fronts. This development marks a pivotal moment, as the silence surrounding this case for the past 27 years has resonated deeply within our community.
Our system and society are fully aware of the significance of the loss we have experienced with the passing of this individual, who was not only my sibling, but also the son of my mother and father. It is crucial that we do not allow his life and death to go unresolved or unnoticed. While today's development is a step forward, I will withhold my judgment until all the facts and legal proceedings have concluded. Furthermore, it is suggested that there may be additional arrests in connection with this case, as my family and I believe that there have been multiple individuals involved. We are determined to seek justice in every aspect surrounding the life and death of my brother, Tupac, and our entire Shakur family. In response to the recent arrest, my older brother, Mopreme Shakur, described it as bittersweet for various reasons. He acknowledged that it did not have to take 27 years for this to happen, and he expressed his sorrow for having to face the reality of his brother's absence. However, he also recognized that justice entails holding individuals accountable, which provides a sense of satisfaction amidst the bitterness. Jada Pinkett Smith, who has publicly spoken about her close friendship and rumored romantic relationship with Tupac Shakur during their childhood, also shared her reaction on Instagram. She expressed her hope that we can now obtain answers and find closure. May Tupac rest in peace. Ice-T, a rapper, expressed his confusion about the delayed arrest of Keith D, while acknowledging that Keith D had incriminated himself numerous times during interviews. Ice-T questioned why it took law enforcement so long to apprehend Keith D, considering that if he had been in a car with someone who committed a crime, he would be considered a participant in the crime. Ice-T also couldn't comprehend why Keith D would openly admit to his involvement in interviews if he didn't want to be caught. Ice-T concluded that he had no respect for Keith D and that the entire sequence of events was beyond his comprehension. Damn, so Pac got lined by brother love lol time to lawyer up she asterisk T might get sticky, 50 Cent jokingly shared. Multiple reports, including one from Keith D, claim that Diddy offered a million dollars to have his enemies killed. However, Keith D never received his share of the money. In fact, Diddy cut off all contact with him, trying to cover his tracks. Finally, justice seems to be served as Keith D finds himself behind bars. Now the world can rest assured that Tupac has received justice.